I wanted to talk about identity and um, abusive dynamics. And um, we tell ourselves a lot of stories about abusive dynamics. And one of the most terrible things that working with actual power relations all the time teaches you um, is that the most harm that people do is actually about good intentions and about the fact that they were good, that were good. And that apart from the core, like there is a core number of people who have no ability to feel empathy, who have no ability to see beyond their own identity and who seek to create theater around themselves where they reinforce their own like shame and delusions and problems. And there are that core of people who are always dangerous and they're largely defined by the fact that they can't see beyond their own identity, they can't feel empathy for other people, they cannot see any situation outside themselves and those people are really, really dangerous. But most people, when they cause harm to somebody else, it's actually, you know, relationships are hard. Growing up and finding out that you are an individual in a world and you have to relate to other people, relationships are really, really hard. And what most of us learn over time, often through your, your entire experience of motherhood and parenthood, is this. It's learning that sometimes you can't see something and you behave in a way that harms someone else and then you find out that it's harmed them and you are broken by it and you learn from this and it's painful and that's what it means and then you learn you know about yourself and you learn about other people and that's what normal healthy people do so i wanted to talk about um i the identity that's currently the identity politics that's currently eating itself on twitter so one of the problems with coming from the looked after system and then spending my life in those systems working in them is that everybody I have ever known pretty much has known this. Has, you know, we all know to watch out for the red flags when somebody can't see the limits of their own identity, especially when they're using power. And we kind of know that in abusive relations. But one of the things that I didn't know before Twitter was that we had an entire culture of people who have never been taught this. So. Uh, Universities below each but Bradford, you know, places like that, we all get taught that because we have to not do harm and we have to be able to spot abuse. But the place where that is not taught is at elite institutions. And one of the really shocking things, one of the reasons that I knew that I had, that what was happening was happening, was when I met Laurie Penny and her friends, I realised that they could not do this and that this defined them and nobody had ever told them that we do this. They didn't know that we had a system that would do this, they didn't know the rule of law was done this, they didn't know that intersectionality was embedded in our systems because actually we've learned over a very long time and the welfare state came into being very much as a response to a class who believed that their identity as good meant that they could do what they wanted and they could identify as somebody's representation because the working class were not enfranchised. And what I realised when I met Laurie Penny and her friends was that I had met a re-emerged, me a mediating class had re-emerged, probably as a consequence of the kind of changes made by Thatcher and Hayek to bypass institutions and probably about the growth of media democracy and elite social closure, that this tiny group of friends who are basically the Dossers wing at Oxford, I mean really this is where this isn't even courses that people can apply to. This is the Dossers wing. This is a group of mates who really are like the thick kids at Oxford. And what they believe is that if you're shit at everything else, you just identify as the voice of the marginalised and you get your media career that way. And they didn't know that pretty much every professional in this country, health, education, social care, whatever, we already know that you don't do that because you will cause harm and we know that that is at the core of abusive dynamics but they don't know this and this is coming out. So the trans rights activism which we're seeing, I've seen, um, the problem is that when you create an idealised identity for yourself, which is what a lot of abusive people do, you also then have to create an object onto which you dump the things you don't like about yourself so that you can work them out. And you generally pick the person who reminds you your identity is false. So this is why the Navarra brats and the elite left and Corbynites go after benefit claimants and social care users and women. Because this is the people whose political machinery they are occupying. And I'm really grateful that they've demonstrated that and that they're kind of locked in Twitter protecting identity because when you are doing that, when you have constructed a false identity for yourself and the way that you manage that is by creating objects onto which you project dysfunction, you just go around and around in circles. So around these you've seen scab, the same process you will have seen 
scab, melt, turf, like they'll come up with another one next week. Once this situation has passed, they'll come up with another one because at the core of it is a bunch of kind of young people who have been led to believe because of elite social closure that you can identify as somebody's representation. So what they've actually managed to do because they've had no insight into their behaviour over about eight years, they've managed to show how the neoliberal consensus was always delivered. And what they've managed to show is that a really important, important thing, which is actually what we already knew, which is the most harm that we do as a human species comes through failure to reflect on identity and the power that you're exercising. And what they're demonstrating on Twitter at the moment is the reason that we got the welfare state in the first place and the reason that the rule of law evolved in the first place so that that didn't happen to people. And the reason that they're using TERF is because they're really, what they thought austerity was, was a return to their class kind of dominant somehow we were going to return from being a 21st century society to the poor asked the left for pity i don't even know where they got this it's utterly mental you must want you gotta wonder what they're being taught but they genuinely and because they have no insight into the the false identity that they've generated on the dossers wing at oxford they're just caught in circles demonstrating it on Twitter, so that's really good, and I'm really pleased about that. And while that's a bit messy at the minute, for historians, the fact that they didn't have any insight into it, and they were willing to demonstrate it, and demonstrate elite social closure of the power of labour, and demonstrate that they would try to end the welfare state and reproduce their class identity, while it has created this massive conflict, it's actually really interesting to watch. And because they're such a small social network, you can see how elite cultures refusing to reflect on identity and then trying to exercise power results in abusive behaviour. So I know that this is all messy, but it's actually really useful. And they've picked a medium. The digital revolution isn't going to change, but the Twitter bubble that they've created for themselves, they can't get out of because they're just going round and round with abusive behaviour. So I'd use it if I was you. I'd just learn get on with it.